Ooh, what's up guys and welcome to our draft breakdown of the UBL season 3. Now before going in, I do want to say that we are going in week 3 and we are covering for Garchomp to God, Austin, who, well, I guess you'd be honest here, has feeling a bit depressed and actually um, took a step back from both YouTube and uh, social media, which I believe is a very good thing to seclude yourself, to avoid things that stress you out and just focus on yourself. Uh, I really hope you're getting better soon, buddy. Uh, I really do. All things considered, that's happening not too recently with Etika. I can only like think. Hopefully, people are taking this more seriously than never. Um, that said, uh, we made some changes to his team, and they were mainly because the way he plays a more bulkier way of playing um, is not my forte, nor would I say that the three changes I made solved the team in a better essence for me. His team was very well constructed with only a few issues, and I don't believe the changes I made made the team better, but only more in my forte to, of course, use it better. So that said, we're going to go over the draft, and I'm going to go over the three last months that I changed last, just to get in touch with what I was going for. So with that said, enjoy. So the first Pokemon to come out in the draft is Cure and Black. Cure and Black is all things considered probably top five in the format when it comes to well, just Pokemon overall. It's very balanced. It's like very very good Ice type, and it's a fair Dragon type. I think that's where it lacks a bit. That it doesn't cover the Dragon aspect that well, mainly due to reducing some key resistances. But it does take Neutral to Fire and Ice, which is very great for the uh, combination itself. Being weak to Stealth Frogs is always a bad thing. But it ext is extremely bulky and extremely offensive. 170 attack, while being probably the highest in the game, it's, well, all things considered, uh, not as usable, mainly because of its stab combinations. However, say a special attack of 120, which on paper seems to be bad in comparison to the attack, is still not that bad. Special attack of 120, there really aren't that many Pokemon that have that, and it can use this really well. Um, so yeah, just overall, Kieran Black, one of the best Pokemons in the game, and um, the way to parry that Pokemon is to make sure that you have Pokemons that can keep away hazards. And um, I think this team has to an extent that covered. Uh, but with that said, get to follow up with the next Pokemon. So this was followed up with Sarah Aura, which is absolutely top 5 electric types in the game. Um, it's no doubt... Coco is the best, and then it's between Thunder's Eye and Zapdos, the top two and three. And then it's either Thunder's T or um, um, Serora. For me, Serora is debatably better, mainly because I have two ways of setting up in both Bulk Up and Call Mine. And, um, well, Thunder's T has that essence too. It doesn't have this mixed offensive that Serora represents. Serora has two issues it lacks U turn and it lacks Ice Punch. Two key features which would have made this Pokemon a really, really good one. It still is one of the best, it just is not superb in that area. That said, we have both Plasma Fist, which is one of the best, if not the best, physical electric type move when it comes to Pokemon itself. And we have Close Combat, which is great for something this offensive. Um, Volt Absorb makes sure that we deal well with Thunderous T, we, we deal well to an extent against Habakoko, and we nullify um, Mega Manetric. So basically, Sarah Aura is the undisputed king of electric checks, and uh, it should be working well here. I'm looking forward to using it. It has a, a, one of those really elite speeds here, 143. There really aren't that many things creeping it or outspeeding it, and it should be able to do quite right. Um, and just a roll. I like the Pokemon itself. I used it once before, uh, never used it to its fullest potential in the league concepts. So I hope I get the chance to do that here. And this was followed up by Chandelure. Um, should be stated, I was debating dropping Chandelure for Jellicent, um, but decided that I haven't used Chandelure at all, ever, and I should probably take the, the chance to do so. Um, its ability is quite fine, its stab combination is very, very high, uh, or very hard to switch into. Ghostfire is one of the best combinations, actually. Um, I think Alua Marowak represent the best off of that. As the Flame Body, Flash Fire, Inf Infiltrator is good abilities, and um, it has a fair defensive stance, both 90s, just low HP, and uh, a very, very high um, special attack. So, yeah, like I said, I haven't used this Pokemon uh, myself at all, 
and I really really hope I get good use out of it. I know it's a good Scarfer, I know it is a very good defensive Pokemon with Substitute Call Mine. So let's see which way we figure out this one. I really like that it's a Scarf or Choice Mon that can use Switcheroo or Trick. And I like that Gardevoir is pretty much the same when it comes to that type of key features. Now there is an issue with drafting something like Gardevoir or Psychic Fairy type and that is that you immediately make sure that you already have a Psychic and Fairy to cover Fire types. Curran Black often needs something to parry Fire types and getting a combination that shares this is usually not key. That said, Gardevoir is one of the best fairies in the game, like very high special attack, fair speed, and Trace. Like, Trace is the only reason you get Gardevoir. It makes sure that no Weather Sweepers can win against you, which they rarely do. It also means that there is really no abilities that you can't get nerfed out on. My favorite one is always Tracing Regenerator, which is something like Tornado's T, with a Soul Fist to kind of check it, and Gardevoir installs that. It is a very good offensive Pokemon that can solve a defensive role, and so doing that surprisingly well considering its stat distribution. And then we have Gligar. I'm not a fan of Gligar, never has been. Um, it has a really good, I guess you say, speed and defense stat, and the Violite will resolve a lot of things for it. Uh, however, I really, really was trying to get Landorus here, but I just I couldn't find a combination to solve it. So that said, we have the worst ground and flying type in the game but we only have four of those so it's it's not a bad thing. We only have two weaknesses in of course water and ice and it's a good defensive typing and being a Gliscor or Gligar I mean going to cover that aspect for my team it might as well be the most defensive one of them. Uh, we have roofs which is great and uh, we have immunity to make sure that we don't can be toxic stalled so it has its merits it's just that I haven't used it before I well. We have Default, we have Stealth Rock, we have U-Turn. There are a lot of aspects of Gligar to make it work. It's just that it's a passiver Gliscor and it always kind of bugs me. But I think we should get good use out of it. And I really like that it is a Defogger that can pivot and set up assets. I think that's going to be key for me going into this league. So a predetermined Grass type is something I rarely use ever. I used it in generation 6, but actually took a break from Verision. Verision is the worst of the Musketeer Quartet. That said, they're all primarily really good, so it doesn't serve any justice to it. Verision being a grass flying combination is not half bad. It has a very fair attacking style, like Cobalion, really, 1990. But then instead of very low special attack, it has a really high one, but a lower defensive stat instead. Overall though, these Pokemon are fairly bulky and the speed are 108 do resolve some issues. However, when I took over this team, Verisian was not a C user. The reason Verisian actually was going from NU to RU was because people were um, realizing how good its C pool really was. And primarily, of course, the all out pummeling with close combat and sword stance. So we couldn't have that, we needed to change that. Verision is now a sea captain for this team. And yeah, just overall, I look forward to using this Pokemon as I, like I said, never really used it. It's definitely not a league concept, I used it when I was laddering, and that's about it. Verision is overall a soft Pokemon to switch into, and while I did consider, like I said here, actually dropping it also, um, I'm still happy I kept it, consider how the team looked after the changes. So yeah, J Verision. And now we get to the poison type and dark type, Skunk Tank. Now this was also re an issue I felt, and this was something that when I saw the team I realized that Gardevoir is doing the fighting stab heavy duty with Gligar. Skunk Tank is of course, while lacking, or lacking, only have one weakness in ground, it does lose due to being a poison type its immunity or resistance, I guess you'd say, to uh, um, fighting stab, which is an issue. Um, Skunk Tank is not a very good defensive Pokemon, it has a very high HP set, but is really shaking his defensive stat. Fair speed tier, decent attack, low special attack. It has aftermath, uh, but yeah, overall, like when I got this team, I always think was how do I get Carboarder into this team? Answer: You don't. Couldn't get the combination to work, uh, unfortunately. Um, so we gotta work with this. Skunk Tank is. It's not very good. I don't know why people are still praising it. For me, for being a hyper offensive player, this is a Pokemon that is way too passive for me. But it has two really good merits. First off, Defog. That's huge. Um, it's gonna be very good for 
cure and black to have something to soak to stock the spike but also get rid of acids. Second merit, aftermath um, and combination of for sucker punch and pursuit. Um, these are aspects that's going to make this Pokemon viable. I myself could, like I said here, say that it is bad and it won't work for certain individual things, but at the same time, there are key features of this Pokemon I could be using, and instead of actually bashing too much on it, try to celebrate what it works with. Uh, it absolutely is my lowest tiered Pokemon, but it also is one of the more interesting one I can use here, depending on my matchup. So, I look forward to use it. It's not my type of Pokemon, but it has its merits, and we'll see if I work around that. And before we're going into the drop months, we're gonna get our Mega out of the way. Now, this is probably the fifth time I'm using Mega Scissor in a league. I'm really tired of using this Pokemon. While it is one of the best Steel types in the game, it, it absolutely is. And also Defogger and you know, Sword Stance Bullet Puncher. It has a lot of things going for it that are just about right. It's just that I don't want it. <laughs> and I feel silly talking about it. Um, Reasons um, I was actually considered dropping Mega Scissor for B Drill also, but or Mega B Drill as, but I just like I said, I couldn't get the synergy to work. So we were sticking to like if we can't get a better Steel type, because you absolutely couldn't. Uh, we're at least gonna keep the best one around. Uh, Mega Scissor is, well, it is probably top three Megas for me. It's it's very complete as a Pokemon, and being that. I have Pokemon that can switch into fire type moves like Chandelure with Flash Fire. It, it's not a bad Pokemon in combination indeed. I like the synergy. It's, it feels very natural. So I hope I get good use out of this Mega Scissor even this season. So now it's time for the talk. The Pokemon I dropped and added. And this was, like I said, this was tough as I don't believe the changes I made inherently made it, the team better, but rather made it more, like I said, for me. To use it better. So first off, we got Gyarados. And we get Gyarados for two reasons, and we dropped Snorlax for it. And we're gonna debate why I did that. Um, I dropped Snorlax because it's a Pokemon I've used before. I feel it's very, very, very one-dimensional. Being a Salt Vest or the Recycle variant with the Belly Drum, I don't like it. I feel it's a boring way of using a Pokemon, and uh, it just, it just, it's, it's boring. It's basically is what I'm going for. Gyarados, however, I've used it once before, um, was really successful in that, and it also will serve as a potential fighting check, consider the team's synergy. Uh, we have Intimidating Moxie, will work well in its favor. Um, it it really is one of the toughest Pokemon to switch into with Dragon Dance, it just, it just does a lot. <laughs> and I like it, I think it's a very good Pokemon overall, and uh, we should get a good use out of Gyarados for this team. Um, there are a way of slow piloting, and I think... Gyarados represent a very, very good switch in two passive Pokemons. It tends to solve them quite easily. This was followed up by actually dropping Seismitoad for Barbarical. Now, I should say this directly. Seismitoad is a superb Pokemon, and I still kind of regret that I dropped it. Um, but I have my reasons. This team do not deal well with flying stabs. Um, it actually don't have a flying resist besides of Seraora. We need a rock type. Yeah, but we also need a rock type that can bait hidden power grass. So Barbaric is on my man. Now I was debating getting stuff like Caracosta, but basically and even almost to an extent, but Barbarical is on the sheep and it gives us stealth rocks, it gives us a shell smash, and it gives us a very strong stab combination that it made no sense for me of doing anything else but adding it. Um, whether or not it's a good ring or not, we have to see this in the future, but like I said, dropping Seismitoad for Barbarical was a very tough call, and I really, really hope that um, I don't get to eat that up in the, going into this league in the future. But Barbarical overall, I've used it once before. Uh, it was my kill leader because Shell Smash just is that tough. But we didn't make a C user, we did Gyarados that I forgot to say that Gyarados is also a C user for this league. And the last Pokemon we decided to add was Beware. And yeah, I mean, that's the thing though. I haven't seen Beware used. We dropped Avalog to get Beware. I think that makes sense. There was no reason having Avalog here. Uh, when we have a Cure in Black, I don't want to get my team too Stealth Rock weak. And one has to, of course, ask the big question. You already have Virision, why did you get another flying type? Virision is more of a sweeper, 
Beware is a wall breaker. Fighting staff combination against the things that have been drafted is key to get ourselves some wins. Uh, Beware is very, very tough to switch into, and I wanted to use it for quite some time. I did, however, consider getting Machamp first, just because Conkeller was drafted. I see you there, Auto, ruining my future draft. But quite honestly, um, Beware is a very, very just overall complete Pokemon as is. It absolutely. Absolutely, it's on the slow side. It is my slowest Pokemon at 60 base speed. That should tell you quite a lot. But Fluffy and Klutz and Unnerved really, really, really um, steps up the game here. Um, I think the word is an excellent Pokemon, and um, I haven't used it in a league concept, so I can only. How do you say it? I can only speculate how viable I can make it, but. Quite frankly, I think Beware is underrated, and I hope we get use out of this. I really, really hope we do, uh, because I did, all things considered, offer to you know, chop off Snorlax from my team to get Beware to be functional. And like I said, I'm still on the fence whether or not uh, the changes I made made the team better or worse, but in theory, it did make the team less bulky and more offensive, which is something that I was striving for. So that's the complete team, and yeah, I mean, I have two issues, I won't mention them, but anyone that's seen my game and how I play probably see them already, but for my money, this is this is good enough. Um, I was debating how many changes I really needed to make the team as ideal as I wanted to with available Pokemon, and basically that was five, and um, I just, all things considered, it wasn't worth it. Three changes made this team, and uh, I think you would work quite right. Now we're going in week four, and um, we are starting with at least two losses. We don't really know how the week three game went, but basically we need to get to top eight, and we have five matches to prove ourselves that we can do just that. Uh, so I basically have to step on it. No losses. We need to defeat one person in particular we look forward for look forward for and that is um, the potato man vepsis v the potato i tried to like for what was his nickname <laughs> uh Helsinki dragons something to look forward to we also be battle frosted and her um copenhagen sauce bucket i believe it's called uh, really really great to face off against the uh, scandinavians of this league even though Pepsis isn't a real Scandinavian, but you know, you get what I'm saying. I also face off against Otto, which we faced him last week. Uh, so I really hope that he's in a good spot where he can, in theory, lose. Because we need we need some f a few free wins if we can get on away. Or, I shouldn't say he lost the game, but rather, you know, that aspect that you feel you don't need to win. Facing against someone that absolutely needs to win. It, there always is a, a greater strife for the victory between players. So I hope we get something like that. I, we need something like that. But yeah, I can do my very best. We're facing off against a few of the greatest players I know, and we're also facing off against two players I don't know too much about. And um, we face off Opie Jellison first week here, which is a person I've been looking forward to battling for quite some time because he plays really, really, really uh, like he has a good private defensive game, which is um, a skill, if anything, to pull off right. And I think he's absolutely superb at doing so. So we'll see if we can match up and keep up. So with that said, thank you for watching and wish me, of course, luck in this upcoming season. And take care here, everyone. Bye.